Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Welcome, 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 one and all, to the Traders Market Intelligence Report. And this is for the week of the 24th of October, 2022. Hope you had a great trading week. I hope it has been a good uh, week for you up to this point, good weekend uh, up to this point. And I want to start off today with looking at the VIX. So you'll see some color coding on my VIX, and I'll get into the details of this a little bit further down the road. But right now, the red zone, considered to be high. The green zone is okay. And the yellow zone, if you're a buyer, is awesome as a buyer, okay? But green is where we're looking at if you're more of a, I buy some and I sell some positions. You really would like it to be low in the yellow zone if you're just a buyer. For me, I do both, which is why my green zone is the one that's in the middle. And that's one that I put the highest focus on personally for me. So the VIX came down a little bit on Friday. It came down 29 cents. Not a big deal. It's not Friday that's really important. It's what's happened in the last week and a half or so. We have dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped from 34 to now we're under $30 in the VIX. So that is awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm not a singer, right? But it is awesome. Phenomenal. Freaking amazing. Whatever word you want to use for, right? I love the, the pattern that's coming down. More importantly, we had a high here and a slightly lower high here. So if we can violate this low, we've already broken moving averages. If we violate the low that's right here, that swing low, it shows us a more historical pattern of moving in a downward direction. Now, why is all of this happening? Well, if we look at the S&P 500, next, all right, let me take this orange bar off of here for now. And let's bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, in, in. All right. So we took a nice little bounce. This was last week, right? This was on Thursday of last week. We gave it all back on Friday. So Monday, we had a gap. Where was our close? Down here. We gapped up right to the moving average, the eight pink line, and we ran just a little bit. Tuesday, we had a nice gap up and we pulled back. And then we failed Wednesday. We failed Thursday. Attempted above this 236, the hesitation level on the fibs. And we finally finally got the breakout on Friday. It, it took some work. It took some doing. We opened a little bit lower on Friday. We got a strong push up through the 3,700, up through the 3,711. We closed in neutral territory. Right now that happened a few days ago, right back here, but we were really tight on that 21 moving average. We were really tight with the confluence of the 236. Friday, boom, we burst right through it and said, ha, I don't care. We're going to break that line like it never existed, right? They were chipping away at the ice the last couple of days. Yeah, the ice is on the ceiling this time, okay? So we got to close up above, and we're in neutral territory. Again, it happened a few days prior. We were in neutral, but, man, we barely got in that neutral zone. The moving averages have started tightening up. Why? Because we're not moving. The last couple of days, we've been more of a sideways pattern for five or six days, right? So the moving averages are tightening up between the 8 and 21. The 21 and 55 still have some spread to them. If you're not familiar with colors, look at the top, right? The 8 is pink, the 21 is green, and the 55 is the brown one. And there's a 5 in there also, but we only use that for one exit type uh, in power option plays. And we really haven't had to use it in, goodness gracious, almost a year uh, because of the way we're taking our trades now with how nutty the marketplace is. So what are we looking for? All right. In a neutral bias, we can move in either direction. But if I had to pick a direction where I would rather see it go, I'd rather see it back down. It's an easier pattern to get into. Well, can we go up from here? Yes, but for me to take a bullish trade, two things have to happen. One, the price has to be above the highest moving average, so above the 55 right now. That's number one, but not enough for me to say, take a directional overnight trade. Second thing that has to happen is the eight must cross up through the 21. The eight moving average cannot be, jot that down, cannot be the lowest moving average. If it is, don't take a directional trade. I'm not talking investments. I'm talking about trades. You have to make investment decisions based on what's going on in the market and your risk profile. It's a whole different game when you're investing versus when you're trading, okay? So don't make that as, a, as an investment, as a trade rather, until you get those two things happen. Close above the 55 and the eight closes above the 21. Not got above intraday, closes above those levels. Once that happens, then and only then, are you okay? Are you authorized? Do I give you permission? I'm kidding. Do whatever you want. It's your money, right? But I give you my permission, my blessing to consider a swing trade at that point. All right? 
So where do I see us going this week? Well, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to run into that 382, if anything at all, right? We've got to get above the previous high we had here. Not much above, not much higher, but we've got to get above that high. That's number one. And then you can see one, two, three days. The last time we pushed up at this 382, three days in a row, we pushed up, we pushed up a little bit more, we pushed up a little bit more, and we failed, right? We need to get away from that. We need to close above that 3790 level, that 3800. We need to close above that level. Unless we see that happening, I cannot get excited about anything to the upside at all. If we get that move, there is some potential for some upside for us to go. We don't have major fib lines, meaning like this 4181 here or this 3382 half level here. We don't have those in our way yet. Yet. Do I believe this is a bottom in here? Hey, listen, anything is possible, right? But I don't believe it's a bottom. Do I believe the election results could help cause a bottom? Yes. Depending on who gets elected, what we see happening with the government, the announcements that get made after that. If one party wins and they come out and say, we're going to spend all this money, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, it could cause the markets to go up or down, right? We're going to save money, we're going to spend, whatever it is, it could cause the markets to make directional moves up or down. There's talk of the Fed potentially tightening into next year, right? And, and there's, that's where they start to see inflation kicking in and, and all of those types of things, right? And again, it's all speculation at this point. We don't have a clear path to that at this point. Do we get a recession? Do we get the continuation moves to the, the upside on the interest rates? Does the Fed start backing down? Do they feel they've done enough? What happens with the war in Ukraine and Russia? What the heck is going on with Europe when, when the prime minister is there for like, what, an hour and a half and she quits, right? I mean, there's so many things that could have a dramatic effect on the overall marketplace. You've got to keep your eyes open. So how do we trade it then, Rob? You're going to trade this based on the major FIB levels. Don't do anything around those Fibonacci levels. And, and what I mean by that is unless we're moving to something, use that to make a decision. Right now, I'm in a neutral bias. That tells me don't you dare hold a trade overnight. Unless an investment, of course, trade. Remember the words, trade. We're not going to hold that trade overnight. It's a trade. We're going to be in and out today. Doesn't mean you're in and out every 15 seconds. I could get in at 10 o'clock in the morning and out at 3.30 in the afternoon. It's, it's a day trade. It's an intra day trade i'm in and out the same day it's all it is i'm not day trading with the so's bandits s-o-e-s small order execution system go look it up right that's where you're trying to get 12 and a half cents one eighth of a point over and 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 over again in a day 50 80 100 plus times a day that's not what we're trying to do here okay we work off technicals not off of momentum which is what that was Right, so look at the two fib lines that we're at. If we violate and break through that 100 point level to the downside, that 3600, then uh, 3700, then look at the next move down. Where's the next fib line? If we break up and we break through the 3800, look at the next fib line. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Make it a profitable day. Stay focused on the quest of becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it. And remember, you're just one trade away. Take care, everybody. I will see you at our next update. Bye for now. Folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the training. Now, if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and go ahead and hit the subscribe button right over here and hit the bell to keep up with all the latest trading content. And oh, did you know that we have a podcast? Supercharge your trading education with the Stock Market Millionaire, which you can find in the description down below. And while you're there, you can also find other amazing free trading resources that I've put together just for you.